We're still looking at uh, Objective COB8, where we're dealing with proving and establishing things to be congruent uh, using congruent triangles. In this particular worksheet, Worksheet 4, we introduce uh, the idea of how do we prove not just things, triangles to be congruent, but maybe to prove lengths or angles to be congruent. And the, the general idea is to first establish congruent triangles and then if the triangles are congruent they have all their corresponding parts that are also congruent. So I haven't written everything out here in this example. We'll show you a few examples in a minute but the idea is let's say you're given some information and they're asking to prove that that has to be equal to that. Well the action plan you want to take is first finding the key information to prove that the two triangles are uh, congruent initially. So if I was doing a proof, and I'm kind of skipping through things, but I would create the proof so that I would say triangle one thing is congruent to the triangle other thing for a reason. Once you've established those two triangles are congruent, you now know this angle equals that, this side equals that, this side equals that, everything matches within the pairs. And so I could then say, oh, triangle AB, or sorry, not triangle, but side AB is congruent to side uh, BC because, and we use a little shortened phrase, CP, CTC. Now that's kind of a weird phrase. It stands for the congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or corresponding, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So these are corresponding parts of triangles that we've made to be congruent, therefore they are congruent. I actually use a little uh, diagram that kind of summarizes it as well. I, I accept this. It basically says, I've established that the triangles are congruent, therefore the parts are also congruent. But the idea is first show congruent triangles, and then it's usually just one or so steps beyond that. So really it's just the same proof with maybe one more step involved as we've just already been doing. Let's show you one or two. So again what the first thing we notice about this particular proof is that it's not proving congruent triangles. It wants to prove some sides that are congruent. The logic that we're going to use is we're going to prove that they are congruent first and then once they're congruent corresponding parts of those two congruent triangles have congruent uh, pieces and parts, angles and sides. So again, like all other proofs that I've done of this type, I like to start with the givens. It's always good. Um, in this case, I can get them all on one line. And those were the givens. Also, I want to spend a little time putting that into the diagram, but it actually is already there. Here's the two arrows showing parallel, and then BC and DC. Now one thing I will say is students confuse arrowheads to mean equal sides. That's not the case. Most all of the time, parallel lines will provide you angles and not necessarily anything about sides. So we need to prove um, the two triangles are congruent. So I really have only one side so far, but angles can come easily. I can say this angle and this angle are equal. And I'll even use a shortcut. I'll say angle A. It's the only angle there as congruent to angle E because these are called alternate interior angles are congruent when you have parallel lines. Now, this can be written out lots of different ways. Different teachers uh, require a certain amount of writing, but I like to shortcut it. Alternate interior angles are congruent with parallel lines. And I'm actually going to use that again. I'm going to use B is congruent to D. Same reason. Uh, alternate interior angles are congruent with parallel lines. Now you actually could list the vertical angle. There's often with most groups, there's multiple ways to do it. I do notice I have angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. So I am good enough to say triangle ABC is congruent to, now follow the same direction, it would be EDC, triangle EDC, by angle, angle, side. 
Now that we've established the congruence of the two triangles, we know that the pieces all have to match up, right? A to C has to match E and C. So we can just jump straight there. AC is congruent to EC. And our reason is CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Sometimes I've, I've just said because two, because the two triangles are congruent. In other words, all the parts match up. Maybe let's look at just one more just as a way to, to uh, see uh, one more example. Uh, again, we start with our givens. Let's see, BC is congruent to DC. Let's mark it. Always mark it on your diagram. These are equal. These are equal. Well, that's nice. Uh, those givens gave me two sides. This is a side. This is a side. If I can find the angle between them, which I can, that's a vertical angle. And this time I'll show you another nice little trick. Sometimes you can just number your angles and say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Vertical angles are congruent. As long as it's in your diagram and I can look up and see that, that's perfectly fine as well. You call something angle one and there's no angle one up there, that's not so good. The triangle ABC is now congruent to EDC, triangle EDC. And our reason is side, angle, side, side, angle, side. Now, to here is proving congruent triangles. One more step will finish the job. That would mean, of course, the angles B course and D have to be equal. If you make a congruent statement then that has to be true. C, P, C, T, C. Or like I said the triangles are congruent to each other. Quite straightforward. Um, you know the steps are quite direct in terms of what needs to be done. I actually like to keep track of how many angles and sides that I've already listed and that can help some students along the way.